No takers on the doors. That's fine. <laughs> all right. Thank, uh, thank you all very much for coming. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the OVN project and kind of give an update on what we've been working on. Uh, my name is Russell Bryant. Hi, I'm Kyle Mestry. Justin Pettit. And I'm uh, Ben Pfaff. So uh, let's uh, just get started here. So uh, let's, let's start out with uh, uh, a little bit on, on what uh, OVN is actually aimed at. So the, the idea here is that uh, OVN implements network virtualization. So uh, what, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we're, we're separating the, the structure of the, the physical network uh, from the virtual network. If you have a, uh, a legacy physical network in uh, one of your environments and you want to move that into a cloud, then uh, as you can see on the left, you, you probably have some sort of a, a, a network topology. It might involve switches. It might, might have routers in there. And then uh, when you uh, move your, uh, your physical machines into a cloud, the, uh, the, the VMs and the containers, uh, they're uh, uh, not necessarily placed in a physical topology that has anything to do with the physical topology you had before. So uh, if you want to retain the properties of the network, you have to introduce that in a virtual manner uh, because you, you can't uh, constrain the, uh, the physical network in the, the same way that you did the virtual. Uh, or the physical network in the same way that you did uh, when everything was physical. Uh, so uh, OVN provides abstractions that allow you to uh, recapitulate your uh, physical network in your virtual environment uh, with uh, most of the same features and allows you to do it in a self-service manner. So uh, why, why did we start OVN? Well, so uh, we'd, we'd looked around at uh, a lot of the uh, networking projects, and uh, we, we felt like there was a lot of opportunity uh, for improvement. Uh, so uh, Justin and I here have been involved in Open vSwitch uh, since the very beginning, and uh, we, we have a lot of experience with it, therefore. And uh, we felt like there was a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, Im implement things in a, in a way that would be uh, simpler, uh, more efficient, and easier to understand. Uh, in addition, we, we felt like it was a, a natural uh, evolution of Open vSwitch. Uh, Open vSwitch, uh, up to this point, had only uh, um, implemented some pretty low-level abstractions. You could build other things on top of it, uh, but uh, we, we hadn't actually done that. And uh, over the years, we'd, we'd had a lot of people uh, ask us, you know, where, where's the rest of it? Uh, where, where's this uh, distributed uh, switch? And we felt like it was, it was time to start building that. Uh, the, the other thing is that uh, if, if you look at, say, the, the existing Open vSwitch integration in Neutron, it was pretty tied to Neutron, and we felt like it, w it made sense to have something that was a, a little, more, little more separable so that uh, you, you could apply it to uh, other uh, cloud management systems as well. Right. So, so I guess the next question is, now that we know the motivations around OVN, is why should OpenStack care about OVN, right? So. And, and I've been saying this for a while, I think, that you know, Neutron is, is more of a platform. So its, its job should be to provide cloud networking, but it should also be an API and a database server. I think that's ultimately what it should be, and it should be a platform to enable a lot of other things as well. Um, so you know, that's, um, and Neutron already uses Open vSwitch, obviously. The default implementation, the, the, ref, the L2 agent-based approach already uses Open vSwitch. There's actually a lot of other um, both open source and proprietary things that use Open vSwitch as well. So there's, you know, Open vSwitch is, it's not a part of Neutron, but it's used by a lot of different plugins and drivers for that as well. So, um, you know, OVN is definitely in scope uh, as well uh, to increase OVS implementation there. Um, and as well, if, and as I think the other critical thing to think about here is, um, should OVN succeed in its mission, it's actually going to simplify some things within Neutron, I think, as well, because it kind of removes um, that the the, the work that's being done by like the L2 agent right now, that kind of moves into OVN as well. Um, and so it simplifies what Neutron is and the scope for Neutron there as well. All right, so now, now that we've kind of got a little bit of background of like why, why we're doing this, why OpenStack should care, you know, what is it? So um, this, this slide is sort of a, a, a bit of a feature list in a sense. So it's, um, uh, it provides logical switches. That's, that's your Neutron networks. Um, it, it has this concept of layer two through four ACLs, which we use to implement security groups for OpenStack. 
Uh, it implements uh, distributed logical routers. It supports uh, multiple uh, tunnel overlay protocols. And it also supports top of rack based um, uh, logical to physical gateways, so the physical switches that, that support um, uh, being a VTEP endpoint uh, as a gateway into physical networks. We have support for that. Um, OVN is, is a part of the OVS project, uh, so it ends up working everywhere that OVS works today. So most of our development has been on Linux using KVM and Zen. It also works uh, with containers. There's, there's people working on integrating this stuff with, with containers, uh, with Docker. Um, you can, you, it, the use of DPDK as the data path for OVS is transparent to OVN, so it works with that. It should work with Hyper-V. Uh, we actually haven't really done any um, dev or testing against it, but um, I don't think there's, there won't be an enormous amount of work to make this uh, work with Hyper-V as well. Uh, so, so at least we'll work there eventually. In terms of integration, so where OVN is used, we've got, uh, we've been developing integration with Neutron basically in parallel with the development of OVN itself in the last uh, six to nine months. And, but, but it can also be integrated elsewhere, other cloud management systems. Uh, there's, there's, there's people looking into integration with things like Kubernetes, for example, as, as well. So that, that's also being worked on. So some of the particulars about the project itself. Uh, so it's being developed by the same community as Open vSwitch. So that means that it's all the developments happening uh, out in the open on the OVS dev mailing list. Uh, the project is vendor neutral, as you can tell, since we have IBM, Red Hat, and VMware here. There's also a number of contributors from other companies as well. And uh, as I mentioned, all the development is occurring in public. You can uh, go to the OVS dev mailing list, and you can see all of the code coming in and being reviewed there. And it's uh, developed under an Apache license, which means that uh, if people can bring the project in and can make modifications to the to the project without having to share them themselves, which sometimes makes it a little easy for some uh, some companies to deploy it. And that's nice for OpenStack, because all of OpenStack is distributed under the same license, the same Apache license. So some of the goals of the OVS project. Uh, one, it should be production quality. Uh, I think OVS has a pretty good reputation generally uh, the, for the, the switching component itself, uh, for, the, um, for performance and for uh, stability. Uh, the des design's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's fairly easy to reason about. Uh, we plan to scale to thousands of hypervisors, uh, and, then, and that's just the connection to the hypervisors. That doesn't include if there are multiple containers or uh, VMs running on those, those hypervisors. Uh, and uh, we've really looked at trying to improve the performance and the stability over some of the other alternatives that we've seen out there that provided some of these features. So now we'll talk about how OVN is different. So um, here's an overview of how the, the OVN architecture looks. So uh, the, uh, you, you see in the middle there, uh, there's a, a couple of databases that are involved. And the databases are the core to the architecture. Uh, OVN doesn't really have a controller uh, in the same sense as uh, a lot of uh, uh, similar systems. Uh, instead, uh, the way it works is that the cloud management system, or uh, uh, in this case, uh, a Neutron, uh, pushes the desired configuration uh, of, of the system uh, down to uh, what's labeled there as the northbound DB. And so that DB is expressed in terms of, uh, of uh, semantics like, say, uh, logical switches and logical routers. Uh, it, it doesn't say anything about uh, the, the physical layout of the system. So uh, the, the component that's closest to being a central controller uh, there, uh, you see that's uh, OVN North D. That takes that, uh, um, that northbound database and it, it translates it into a, a simpler lower level format uh, in, in terms of, uh, of logical flows. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, logical flows later. Uh, and it, it puts that into the, the southbound database. Uh, then on each hypervisor, uh, we have a local controller running. So that local controller, it talks to the southbound database to see uh, what the system should look like, and it, it translates that into uh, specific terms for Open vSwitch on its own particular hypervisor and pushes that down. Uh, so the, uh, the, the, the system is, is quite distributed in the sense that uh, um, most of the logic uh, for a particular hypervisor is calculated on that hypervisor. Uh, so the OVN controller, local OVN controller, is just the format uh, OVN agent? Uh, so, so the question is uh, the difference between the OVS agent and OVN controller. Uh, so the... 
so uh, it, it's true that in both cases you need some logic on the uh, um, on each hypervisor, and yes, that that does provide the local logic on the hypervisor. The implementation is completely different, and the architecture is completely different. So in, in OVN, uh, the configuration is, as I said, uh, uh, coordinated through these, uh, uh, these two databases. Uh, the southbound database is in terms of what we call logical flows. So a, a logical flow looks a lot like an open flow flow, or a, um, you can even think of it as being similar to, a, to an ACL. Uh, but in terms of being, uh, but it's in terms of, of logical entities, like logical switches and logical routers, uh, instead of, uh, of physical entities, like uh, the, the logical flow tables don't, uh, don't say anything about where things are, uh, uh, are located physically. So, for example, if a VM migrates from one hypervisor to another, uh, the logical flow table doesn't change at all. Uh, and it's the the, log the local controller uh, that's responsible for taking these logical flows and figuring out how they uh, relate to physical entities. Uh, and uh, th th this architecture is one that we've uh, we we've tested in other systems before, and uh, uh, we're we're confident that it uh, um, provides value. And so I want to talk a little bit more about what the Neutron plugin does. So what you know what what exactly is consist you know, what consists of the Neutron integration versus OEN itself. And so the Neutron plugin it speaks the OBSDB protocol to that northbound database, and that that's the that's the integration point. Um, so it's you know when when you create a Neutron network, it then talks to OVN's northbound database to create a, a logical uh, network there. Um, and, and the goal, effectively, of what we're getting to is that the only part of Neutron you're running is the Neutron API server. So you've got the API server running with the, with the OVN plugin, and then the rest of it is effectively taken care, take care, taken care of by OVN as opposed to the, the various Neutron agents that, are, that would be used today. So there's no, there's no RabbitMQ in this case, um, except for notifications. So if you're using uh, notifications consumed by Solometer or some custom listener, there may be Rabbit in that case, but there's, there's not the use of Rabbit uh, uh, um, amongst a bunch of Neutron agents, all of that's replaced by by OVN and its and its database architecture. And okay, so let's you know get, getting into a little bit more details of of um, of how OVN works. So we kind of do we're going to do a little bit of a uh, comparison, maybe a review of what what it works today. So with in, in Neutron today to implement security groups, um, if you're using OVS support, you have to have some you have to have some additional layers. Uh, between your VM and the OVS bridge, you have to have uh, it, we have to stick a Linux bridge there in the middle and, a, and an, an extra VETH pair so that we have a place to apply IP tables rules. Um, so that's how it works today, and uh, and then let's talk about uh, how it works in, in OVN. Okay, yeah, I can talk about this. So, so the the, the way uh, it works today is that this is this has actually been a hotly anticipated feature of OVS for quite a while, and it's just recently merged. But OVS uh, now has integration with the kernel connection tracker, and that allows us to do stateful implement stateful policies in OVS itself. So now, instead of having these extra layers, uh, we can we can hook the VM directly up to the OVS bridge, and then do everything that we need for security groups um, using OVS flows. There was a I have a blog post there. This is the link at the bottom. If you want to like try to try to race race me and see if you can write it down by the by the time we change slides, but um, uh, there, it talks about this in more detail. And that, and that blog post also has a link to a, a talk from the previous OpenStack summit. You know, this integration was in progress at that point. The the OVS contract integration, and they did a lot of performance testing of like the way that security groups are implemented today versus doing it this way, and it, and the performance impact was was significant in terms of like like 30% improvement in terms of the CPU consumption uh, to implement security groups. So <clears throat> that's a great talk if you want to dive into the more details of the, of the performance benefits. But also the pipeline uh, is simplified quite a bit. Sure. Do we get this without the rest of OVN? Um, you can, yeah. So, so th there's, there's sort of layers here, right? So there's, um, to implement this, first you need um, OVS integration with the kernel's connection tracker. The existing OVS support uh, there's actually been prototyping of this already. That can also be updated to implement security groups this way. They'll have to figure out, uh, you know, the right way to, to build the flows, whereas so OVN's doing that itself. Stuff, yeah. Right, but, um, so it, it, can, it can be done. I don't think that's available yet, but hey, it can be. 
Yeah, and, and one thing that I think is important to mention is that all of the work that we're doing, we're not trying to give OVN special preference over any other projects in OVS. So all of the integration that we're doing is not tied to OVN. So there's a very generic interface to programming um, the, the connection tracking flows. And so Neutron's existing plugin could easily be written. Yeah, and it. actually, I mean, I know people have already been working on this, and I expect that it'll probably get worked on this cycle. So this will probably just become the way you would do security groups with, with OVS. I mean, there's, there's no reason you wouldn't do this way once it's more widely available. I mean, the limiting factor is effectively just that it's so brand new. I mean, it requires kernel changes and changes to OVS. Yeah, um, to yeah, yeah, but you know, we certainly get there. But, uh, but all that's coming along. All, all, all of the needed pieces are finally so all wrapped up and all merged in the, into their respective places, including the upstream kernel and the OVS project. So, so I, I think the next thing that, that the team is kind of looking at implementing after security groups has been L3. So the layer three stuff, and how can we do that with OVN as well? So, so I think it's worth looking at the existing L3 stuff and how that's implemented with uh, the agent-based approach uh, right now. And so it is, it is agent-based just like the L2 implementation as well. Um, the L3 uh, functionality with, with the L3 agent is done using um, the Linux IP stack and IP tables as well. That's for both L3 routing as well as uh, NAT as well. And this does allow, uh, th I think the key thing that this allows is for this overlapping IP address support. And um, we do that using network namespaces as well. So this is all the technology that's there, right? And so this, this is what, this is from the, this is from the, the L3, or from the networking guide, right? This is the actual diagram that I explained, and Carl's smiling over there, yeah. This is, a, this is, this is, this is like what it looks like right now with, with all the different bridges and you know, ports and everything. And I think the goal is to try to help, is to try to simplify this as well with OVN as well. So I think that's what Ben's gonna talk about is, is what that looks like. So the uh, OVN L3 design is uh, uh, considerably simpler from an architectural standpoint. Uh, uh, we're, we're able to uh, distribute uh, all, of the, uh, all of the L3 flows through the logical flow table that I was talking about. So uh, if, uh, if you have a L3 router, then that translates in the southbound database into what we call a, a logical data path. And that has flows that implement the routing table, uh, that uh, um, implement ARP, static and dynamic. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we already have a, a, lot of this, uh, a lot of this checked in. There are, are patches uh, in various states of review for, uh, uh, for, for uh, uh, other parts, like the IPv6 support, for example. Uh, and in general, what, what we expect is that the, the flow caching that uh, Open vSwitch does uh, should lead to improved performance here. Uh, in the, uh, uh, the, the way that you do it uh, without OVN, uh, each, uh, each routing step uh, requires a, a hop through a namespace, uh, uh, so you, you have a cost to get in and out. Um, and uh, you also have to go through the, the kernel routing table. So you, you have a, a fairly, not a huge, but a, a significant per packet cost. Uh, with OVN uh, and the way that OVS does caching, uh, you primarily uh, you, you calculate all of that uh, uh, once uh, uh, on the, the, the first trip through the kernel, and then after that it, it's cached, and uh, you immediately know uh, that uh, you, you need to just set the desk Mac and decrement the TTL and, and go on your merry way. And uh, uh, just as a final note, uh, th this won't uh, uh, require the, the Neutron L3 agent. Uh, we're, we're going to uh, talk about uh, gateways in just a moment here. Okay. Uh, by saying cache, you mean the cache is also flow, flow table, right? So the, uh, the, the question is about the cache. Uh, so the, the, this, I, I'm talking about the, the, the caching that uh, Open vSwitch does uh, uh, in a general manner and uh, um, without uh, needing any assistance from the uh, 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 from the OpenFlow programmer. Um, we, we wrote a paper about this that was uh, uh, the best paper at NSDI uh, this year. So uh, anybody who has inter in, uh, interest in that cache, I'd, I'd recommend that you go read our NSDI paper. All right, so now we're gonna talk about uh, gateways. So uh, we've been including in the OVS distribution for quite a while this, this VTEP uh, uh, extension to the OVS DB. Uh, it's a, particular schema that we've uh, put together uh, to work with integration. So this is actually what NSX uses to integrate with um, 
which is a VMware's product for network virtualization to, to integrate with hardware VTEPs. But since it's part of the uh, OVS distribution, uh, we've also been able to leverage that as well. And so that means that with the VTEP schema, you're able to control a number of physical gateways, including ones from Arista, Brocade, Cumulus, Dell, HP, Juniper, and Lenovo. And actually, we have uh, did some work with Brocade. And if you're interested in seeing Oven work with a hardware gateway, uh, you can go to the Brocade booth, and uh, they're demonstrating it down there. Uh, there's also software implementations that we do. And we've uh, done a port to DPDK. So uh, if you want to see a, a you know, sort of a reference implementation of how to write a DPDK application using OVS, um, that code will um, is available as well. Uh, so the. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the capabilities of the VTEP, but right now they're they're fairly um, fairly slim. I mean, they're basically about getting traffic in and out from from physical space to logical space and vice versa. Uh, but I think we'll probably have to move beyond that going forward because you know, there are going to be uh, requirements around uh, L3. Well, actually, L3 is in there, but we need to do scale out and failover and additional stateful services, and we need to continue to to work with vendors to add support for those features as well. But that that's underway. So here's just a, an explanation of what I was talking about with the physical workload integration. So in blue, you've got the, the hypervisors there, and then they've got the yellow VMs. And then you've got the two pink boxes that are the physical uh, workloads. And so you can now use a, a VTEP top of, top of rack switch. So you can have you know, a 48-port switch and have different VLANs for the different physical workloads. And they can all be part of the same logical network. And so we use uh, VXLAN tunnels between the, um, the hypervisors and the VTEPs because a lot of uh, ASICs for the top of racks uh, support the VXLAN protocol. And so we use that to, uh, to get those physical workloads into, uh, into, the, into the logical space. And so you can have much higher uh, fan out than is possible with uh, software switches. Okay, and another topic, uh, I wanted to talk about rolling upgrades for a minute, because this is a topic that's near and dear to, to every OpenStack uh, um, deployer's heart. And so I, I wanted to, to mention that this is something we've thought about for OBN um, and, and confident that this will, this will work fine. And some of the key points about this, so if you think about you know, what does it take to do rolling upgrades in, the, in Neutron today if you're using the existing OBS support, um, there, there's rules around how we manage the database. Uh, there's also rules about how we use Rabbit or the message queue, whatever your message uh, bus of choice is. So uh, versioning the interfaces between the components that are used in the message bus, uh, versioning the data. So if you've heard of like Oslo versioned objects, if you're in the, in working on the development. So there's, there's a ton of work there, um, still a ton of work ongoing there to make that work. Um, to do this with OVN, uh, the, the interface among all the components is the OBSDB protocol. That's a well, that's a well defined protocol. There's, there's an RFC. Um, and and the, the real work is in how we manage the, the schema, the, the database schema. Like that's, that's how the data is transferred among all the components. So the schema is versioned, and we're gonna, we will be you know, uh, very carefully managing our changes to that schema so that they're backwards compatible. I mean, this is something the OBS project has a lot of um, experience doing. That's how, uh, for, the, for the existing OpenV switch schema, for each switch today, you know, they're very careful about making sure that the changes there are backwards compatible, so we will do the same thing. And what that lets us do is, is, is support rolling upgrades in the way that, uh, that is, is sort of expected for OpenStack, right? So you update the databases first in your, in your, in your, uh, in your controllers, not, not, not network controllers, but controller nodes and OpenStack speak, right? So you upgrade those databases first, and then you can roll through the upgrades of uh, each of the hypervisors where we're in, in, in the OVN case where OVN controller is running. So I, I think we have, we have a solid plan for how that's going to work for OVN. It's not really any additional work. All right, so talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about the status of things. So on the Neutron side, so we've been developing things in parallel. Uh, naturally, the Neutron integration trails um, OVN itself just a little bit. Um, uh, but you know what we have support is is basically all the core services. So we support L2 networks. We support uh, so provider networks. So we were actually just a bit ago we were talking about gateways as a as a way to to bridge sort of your logical networks to your physical networks. We also support provider networks if you're exist familiar with existing OBS support. So you can have um, sort of direct connectivity to a physical network available in every hypervisor, and then you can. <coughs> Uh, either connect your VMs directly to that or, or, or create logical routers to those networks. So anyways, we support that. Uh, we support security groups. We've got a couple of things that there's not really well-defined Neutron APIs for yet. One of them is uh, special support for containers running in VMs. So a lot of people, 
running container applications and VMs don't want to create another layer of overlay networks for their container applications. And so we have a way to have those containers sort of independently connected to networks managed by Neutron or, or OVN. But, but there's not really an API to express that in Neutron, so we've got a special binding profile you can use to do it. Um, the other thing is the, the, the VTEP gateways that Justin was talking about. There's not a, really a Neutron API to do that, but we, so we're using a, a special binding profile there for connecting um, a, an existing Neutron network to a, to a VTEP gateway. So, you know, it's, it's exposed, but, but not by an official Neutron API yet. Um, just so, it, I mean, it's exposed, but through an OVN-specific <laughs> API, effectively. So if you, if you were to go spin up our dev stack support today, it's going to enable the L3 agent. That's what we've been using historically while OVN was working on its own distributed L3 support. We've got several patches in the works uh, integrating with the L, uh, OVN's L3, and that's something that, that you know, as soon as we get back, we're, we're jumping right back on, and, and that'll be um, integrated uh, very shortly. So we also use the, um, or we have been using Neutron's DHCP agent historically. But there's patches already up for review for native DHCP support. So effectively what you get is no more Neutron DHCP agent, no more DNS mask, and a distributed DHCP sort of um, managed by each local controller and uh, using flows and, and the local controller. So that's, that's up for review now. So hopefully we'll have that fairly soon. There's some specific Neutron APIs that are being worked on that are of, in, of interest for us. There's this thing called VLAN Aware VMs. It was not originally targeted for this use case of containers running in VMs, but it turns out to be exactly what we needed. We needed a way to express that. You have this port that's like a VIF you know, on a VM, but then logically there are other things inside of that VM, and that's what VLAN Aware VMs is expressing, is you're saying that the port on a VM is a trunk port, and then there's multiple VLANs inside of that, and that actually provides what we needed. So we're interested in helping getting that done this cycle. A couple other projects, the Networking L2 Gateway project is, is aiming to, to provide a, an official Neutron API for the VTEP Gateway stuff we need. And the Networking SFC project is also quite interesting because we've been thinking about um, SFC and OVN and you know, we needed to, to do that for real. First, we need a, a new, an official Neutron API to do it. So those are some of the things we'll be uh, looking at in the integration coming up. So uh, a few more things that we're uh, working on or, or starting to think about. So uh, uh, first of all, uh, we're pretty close to being ready to get uh, NAT support in. Uh, Open vSwitch has been integrating support for NAT in sort of the same way it's been uh, integrating support for the connection tracker. Uh, this means that uh, we'll be able to do NAT through the logical flow table. Uh, w without having to uh, add uh, any specific calls, say, to IP tables. Uh, and uh, just uh, uh, to, I, I should point out that uh, the, uh, the, the other uh, uh, OVS agent for Neutron should be able to take advantage uh, of, of that as well, as long as uh, um, the, the work gets done there. Um, let's see. Uh, as, uh, as Russell mentioned, uh, um, native DHCP support is on its way. Uh, patches have been posted, and there's been a, a, a start on review there. Uh, we, we've started to, uh, uh, to think a lot about service function chaining. It, it seems like it, it may not actually be that, uh, that difficult uh, to get it in, uh, and there is some, some work in progress on that. I, I don't believe any of that's uh, been, been posted yet, but I, I assume that will happen uh, fairly soon. And finally, uh, we're, we're interested in integrating with, uh, with Kubernetes. Uh, I, it seems that the, the basic requirement there is that we have some sort of a, a basic form of a load balancer. Uh, so uh, we're, uh, we're going to uh, work on that. Um, we, we have someone working on that. Um, and uh, possibly that would be useful for, uh, uh, for, for other uh, uh, integrations as well. Okay, so um, we, we've talked about all, all kinds of different things, but if you want to go off and, and look closer and find out more, this, this slide has a bunch of references. So if you want to dive into the OV, um, OVN architecture, there, there's a man page, and it's published on the uh, Open vSwitch website as well and, and, and various forums called OVN architecture. And this goes through um, in, in quite a bit of good detail about uh, the architecture of the system. And that, that's really the document to start with if you want to you know, get a real good understanding of how everything's built. And then that document has several references to others that cover details like details of the database schema or, 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 or details of a particular service that, that runs as a part of the system. Um, all of this code is in the master branch of, of the main OBS repo. So um, it, it's developed right on site. It's, I mean, it's fairly decoupled, but it's in the same Git repo. Um, and it's, in, it's, it's been in master for, for quite a while now, but not in an OBS release yet. Um, and, and there's all the documentation I mentioned right, is there on the OpenB switch site where I, uh, 
uh, that's linked there. The Neutron plugin is, is, is in its own repo. I mean, the, the, the way that you know, Neutron plugins are effectively managed these days is that every, everyone is sort of separated off in its own repo. So we have one, it's called Networking OVN. That's sort of the naming convention of, of the Neutron plugins these days, or the repos for them. And then we have some docs associated with that. Like there's especially one, if you're interested in trying this out, there's a doc in the uh, Networking OVN docs that's uh, about testing and tells you how to use our DevStack integration. It's actually quite simple. You know, you grab DevStack, uh, you grab our sample local.conf for DevStack out of our Git repo, and you run stack.sh. Like it just kind of works out of the box and, and installs all the right stuff. So um, that's, that's some, all the super important references you need to find out more. So if you're interested in the project, uh, you know, right now we're, we're developing pretty quickly for it, but uh, there's a lot of opportunity to, to still contribute, and we have a lot of people who have been joining the project. So like the DHCP work uh, is from some new contributors that uh, just jumped in in the project recently. So you know, there's, there's plenty of opportunity, and we welcome people to, to try developing for it. Uh, also, if you want to try using it, that would be great. Uh, let us know, you know if there are features that are missing or that, you know, that, uh, that would be useful for a deployment. And in particular, we want to know about scaling. And so, you know, as we said, our goal is to scale to thousands of hypervisors. And so we want to uh, have some, some people who run fairly large clouds to, to try, try it out and let us know if there are any, any issues that they see. Uh, so, as you mentioned, the core OVN is being developed on the OBS dev mailing list. There's a link there uh, to the archives, and you can subscribe if you're interested. Uh, and then we also have discussions on the Pound Open vSwitch IRC channel, and we have a weekly meeting at, uh, on Thursdays at 10.15 a.m. Pacific, uh, where we discuss the current status of OVN. Yeah, so in the, in the Neutron plugin, like I mentioned, it's, it's, in, it's in, in its own Git repo. Um, all the development, the development process for the Neutron plugin is the same as the rest of OpenStack. So uh, it's, you know, it's, it uses Garrett, um, just, just like everything else in OpenStack. So the process is the same. Um, if, uh, we use the OpenStack dev mailing list to, to discuss um, details of the integration um, as needed. We also have an IRC channel where the people working on this integration hang out and chat throughout the day of, uh, about the things we're working on or any problems that people run into. And that's the uh, Pound OpenStack Neutron OVN channel. So come hang out with us. And as a quick little tease. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I think we're going to, the keynote tomorrow, there may be a mention of OVN, just kind of a tease, I guess. That was it. Yeah, yeah. I think I was supposed to dance there, but I didn't. So no, that's I'm fine. Sorry. All right, so uh, thank you very much, and I believe we have um, uh, maybe f about five minutes for questions. Can I ask a question? Jack's hand went up. Okay. So the question was, did we go with a core plugin versus ML2? Right now it's a core plugin. Question there at the mic. Uh, it'd yeah, probably okay. be easiest if you can line up at yeah. the mic, but if not, then we'll try to grab you. So let, okay. me, let me get this one next. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, really appreciate to, to see all this uh, advanced feature. We've been waiting for a long time, right? All this uh, connection tracking, all stuff. So it's really good to see that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's this we, we can hear dismissed. you. can hear you fine. <laughs> OK. Um, so the, I can see the potential benefit of using this OVN structure where there is a southbound DB and a northbound DB. It basically effectively separate out from the OpenStack side with this, uh, you know, kind of neutron side plugin. Um, one concern, though, is sorry, that one second. Hey, guys, if, if you want to talk, it'd be great. If you want to go ahead and step out, it's actually really hard to hear the hear the question and probably hard for people to hear our answer. So, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, if if you if you look at this structure right now, um, one of the practical potential issue we're going to run into is that. When when something goes wrong, let's say you know south, south DB, you know southbound DB somehow does not respond anymore, or northbound DB something screwed up, or um, so when there is something really goes wrong, and the always the in, in terms of actual operational perspective, it's very hard to track down and what's going on, what's, why why you know you know neutron does not respond or something, so. And also, in terms of dealing with really large scale, as you mentioned, right? You know, in fact, you know, anyway, we're gonna comes down to okay, how are we gonna really uh, deploy the truly scalable structure of OVN that has truly scalable DB, you know, component there, right? Yeah. So, so I think what, kind of, what kind of thoughts uh, you guys had uh, at this point? 
So I, I think this uh, th this question comes down to uh, uh, where's the where's the scale and the uh, the reliability of the database implementation itself. Well, uh, so th there's a few ways to, to look at this. So uh, first, uh, we're we are working on um, adding uh, a scale out and HA uh, to the OVSDB itself, uh, and and so that that's one way to look at it. The the other is that. Uh, OVSDB is what we're using because uh, we have really good integration with it and we're really familiar with it. But there's nothing in the design that says it has to be a particular database. And so uh, if, if you suppose that we fail at uh, making OVSDB fast enough, reliable enough, and, and scale well enough, then uh, we're perfectly open to picking a different database that uh, already has all of those features. It, it, wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be traumatic to, to switch to another database, and we'll just do that if it proves necessary. Can I ask just a two-part question? The um, L3 agents, or the L3 support you're adding, you added dynamic app support. Was that added to OVS or to OVN? And then the second part is, who can I work with to get support for DPK northbound interfaces in OVN? Uh, so for vhost user, et cetera. So. Let me start with the, the first question about uh, uh, dynamic ARP support. So uh, the, this, this, uh, the, the patches that I'm preparing uh, to, to get out for review on dynamic ARP uh, did require um, a, uh, a small enhancement to OpenV switch itself, but it's generic and uh, it, it might prove useful to, uh, to, to other users uh, of, uh, of OpenV switch. Um, I'm, I'm really reluctant to add anything to OVS that would be OVN specific. That, uh, um, that would be unfair, I think, to, uh, to other users. Uh, but uh, what, I'm, what I'm planning to work on is probably going to be useful to other people. Uh, I, my guess is that when they see it, they'll say, oh, yeah, that's useful. Let's use that. Uh, and I've already forgotten your other question. So the second, <laughs> the second question was, um, who can I work with on uh, exposing DPDK northbound interfaces. So um, that came up on the mailing list at one point, and we need to revisit it just because like, we've been super busy with like, a, a sort of existing task list. And, and the answer was effectively, like, why does OVN need to expose that? And it seemed overly complicated, and it was like, all right, we need to revisit this. And I think it's not so much on the OVN side, unless, um, I kind of want to revisit this on the OpenStack yeah. side. I think OpenStack requiring OVN to expose that to the northbound seems overly complex, and I'd like to revisit it. And yeah. we, so that's so kind of my answer. I poked the engineer who kicked off that discussion on the mailing list. It was, came from me originally, and it was basically, we need to know it so we can tell Nova what interface type it's going to need. Yeah, I, I understand. There's some capabilities. We don't actually need to tell OVN about it and I know, OVN. but like to me, it's like Nova yeah. can pretty easily figure out the capabilities itself. It's the thing, plugging the thing in the switch, it can look it out. So anyways, yeah. we probably don't have time to go into details, but let's talk more. Uh, I want to revisit that and just haven't had time. I think we got a couple minutes. Yeah, well, so currently uh, the, a requirement is OVS support, and there isn't a port of uh, OVS to ESX available. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you.